Hey everyone, my name is Tabitha Leibert and I am a conflict management strategist. And I teach leaders of diverse teams to manage conflict in their relationships, systems and workflows with ease so they can close the gap between issues and outcomes and create peaceful, productive and profitable workplaces. If you can think of someone who would like to also hear this discussion, feel free to share it with them or invite them to watch it with you. Today's topic is unlocking the benefits of culture bridging and restoring relationships. Now, since 2022, a lot of companies have started diversity, inclusion, equity, and belonging efforts, and they have been doing extremely well. However, one of the things that I think we are still working out is how we accommodate people who are from other cultures. We understand that people from other cultures who are transplanted into our culture are what is called culture bridgers. And by that we mean they are bridging the culture that they are from and the culture of their adopted country. There are many benefits to that. Culture bridging makes for a more diverse workplace. It makes for a more educated work population. It helps people to understand each other. It brings increased collaboration and cohesiveness once we get over the difficulties that can sometimes pop up when we are in those situations. Now, there are some differences that can contribute to workplace conflict between individuals from different cultures and different spaces. One of them is communication styles. People might be used to one manner of communicating when they are with the people they're familiar with, and then they adopt another style of communicating in their adopted professional space. And sometimes we inadvertently communicate with one audience the way we would really communicate with the other audience. Think about it this way, and I'll use myself as an example. I could be in a professional setting, and I could be a part of a group discussion or listening on a discussion. Now, whether I am a contributor or a listener, I'm participating in, let's say, a professional work environment. Now, if I take a break and I step outside, I can look at my phone, and I can immediately look at a text from my mom, who is from another culture. And then what happens then is a mental shift from one culture to the next. I could be communicating on the phone with someone from a different culture, in a different language, or in a different manner of speaking. And then in the next minute, shift to my adoptive culture and I can communicate there. Now, when that happens, it requires me to make a mental shift from one culture to the next. Another difference that can happen is differences in values. Each person has different values. And when we bring our whole selves to work, we also bring our values, we bring our beliefs, we bring stereotypes and prejudices. And so many times, those differences can affect how we communicate with each other and how we collaborate. Because out of the values and beliefs and prejudices and stereotypes that we hold, that sometimes we're not even conscious about, those unconscious values, prejudices, beliefs, and stereotypes running in the background sometimes affect how we show up at work. They affect how we communicate, they affect how we treat other people. So we understand that cultural practices and customs can contribute to workplace conflict between individuals or groups who are from different cultures. And this is why culture bridging is so important because when we are able to bridge cultures effectively, we're able to facilitate communication and understanding between individuals and groups from different culture. So my point is that we want to identify the culture bridgers in our workplaces, not only to offer them support, but 
to tap into the value that they bring to the table when we are talking about working collaboratively, when we are looking at how we negotiate, when we are looking at how we advocate, because culture bridgers are able to adapt so quickly in different scenarios that they bring value to the workplace, they bring value to projects, they bring value to outcomes. Here are three ways that culture bridgers bring value to an organization. The first is their ability to recognize and appreciate that there are actually cultural differences at play in the workplace. And someone who is able to do that can quicker look for the root cause of the matter because they understand that there's something else running in the background that we might want to think about before we actually get to the root of the matter. The second way that a culture bridger in your organization brings value is that they can adapt their communication style to accommodate different cultural backgrounds. So you might find that that person is able to connect with many different people in the organization because by virtue of them being so adaptable, they're able to communicate with other people from different cultures and bring a group together to a common understanding. And the third way that a culture bridger brings value to an organization is that they find ways of sharing information for productive collaboration. So someone who is able to bridge cultures, someone who is able to quickly and easily find different ways of communicating is going to be able to think about not only how they share information, but how the receiver will accept that information and find the path towards sharing information that is going to be well received and that will take the project where it needs to go. Let's look a little deeper at what we mean when we talk about culture. Because when we look at culture, we have to appreciate that there is surface culture and there is deep culture. Now, surface culture is easy to see. It is made up of the tangible aspects of culture, things like food, dress, language, the way we speak, the way we communicate, music, our music, the activities that we like to do. Yes, if we think about Brazilian culture, we think about carnival, we think about football or soccer as it's called in the US. However, there's also deep culture, the things that you don't see, the underlying values, the underlying beliefs and assumptions that shape a culture and that shapes someone who comes from that culture. There are many different types of culture that make up who we are. There's geographical culture, there's linguistic culture, historical culture, there's religious culture, ethnic culture, and also gender culture. And all of these comprise who we are and affect how we show up in the workplace. Understanding that each person is comprised of all these cultures is a very, very valuable tool for us to always remember as we communicate in the workplace. And so this is how culture bridging becomes so valuable in the workplace. Someone who is able to bridge all of those cultures, someone who is able to carry their own culture into another environment, succeed, collaborate, help people to interpret what is happening, help people also to negotiate, not only for themselves, but to negotiate for the team, is someone who is extremely valuable in your workplace. And so I want to encourage leaders of diverse teams to commit to building cultural intelligence in your organizations and among your teams, and also to build empathy by actively seeking to understand and appreciate different cultures using effective communication strategies and finding ground for productive collaboration among your team. This is going to help leaders of diverse teams to increase retention rates, stop people from heading out of the door and help your team to enjoy the work that they do and the people who they work with. If you are a leader of a diverse team who is looking for some support in how you collectively manage your team, especially where there are people who are bridging cultures, send us a quick 
email at hello at marshallduke.llc.com and we'll be happy to chat with you. Take care and have a wonderful rest of the day. Bye now.